Hi, this is Panzer Kill 13. Okay, I've been asked to do this video for a while now and therefore we are finally getting to it because I completed the model finally, which is gonna be a totally different video which I'm gonna upload here uh, at the same time. Um, the model subject we're gonna be using is the Hobbycraft 148 scale LA5FN and I won't get into the details of the kit and all of the stuff that I did to it here as this video is only for the weathering purposes. Um, people have asked me, uh, actually I've gotten good responses on my weathering video that I did on the armored vehicles with the pastels and the washes and I've been getting a lot of good responses. Um, I was asked about aircraft and like I said every single piece of armor or aircraft or figures I do or basically anything I mean uh, some guys gonna try it on trucks it, it can take these techniques everything I do uses it and uh, It gives you a really good good result on the cheap. Like I said, I'm about saving time and money Because I know how expensive supplies can be and are going to be getting as uh, the hobby moves along here Kits are expensive to, to begin with and stuff like that But nevertheless the procedures are the same almost as for the armored vehicles The only re difference being that the armored vehicles get dusted at the end because if you well know that as soon as an armored vehicle touches the ground and it starts rolling it starts kicking up a lot of dust and dirt and what have you Airplanes aren't subjected to that that much because as soon as they take off well, you know the air high above is uh, literally dirt free and what have you so they don't get as uh, dusty and dirty and grimy as armored vehicles but the procedure is the same thing and you're going to see examples of different aircraft that I've done over the years uh, if it's in Europe anywhere other than the snow or um, North African theater you're going to start off with a wash of Tamiya XF1 uh, flat black and uh, it, uh, they all get it and the reason being that the wash dries up kind of rough you can't really see it it's microscopic but it helps in holding the pastels a lot of people are asking me what pastels do I use send me a list um, there's so many of you that it would take forever for me to be sending a list to each and every one of you so what I've done is at the end of this video I'm going to hold up each stick I'm going to show you all my sticks that I use and each stick that I use by the name, by the number, and what have you. And like I said before, you're not going to probably find the same exact colors. Get something similar. They're all going to dip very little bit in coloration and what have you, depending on manufacturers. Just get as close as possible, and then you can tweak them from there, the sand and, and mix and what have you. Um, the, the techniques are the same thing wash with flat black if it's in north africa i would wash with flat brown let that dry i'm going to show you some examples of aircraft i've done in north africa so you can see the difference and and um the the final effects of of the dustiness look and, and what have you but nevertheless it's a straightforward um uh beautiful 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 results i love them very quick I do not believe in pre-shading anything armor. I don't believe in color modulation and all that. Natural is natural is natural, and that's the way it is. And if you like to do work twice, then it's up to you. A lot of people frown and they dislike the video because they don't agree with me. But what I've been noticing is that my results bring results. I win awards, and people like the finishes on my models, and I do them, I believe, twice as quick as the average person because, one, I never, ever, ever on an aircraft or any kind of thing, as you saw in my DKL video, I don't gloss. It's a waste of material, money, and it's a waste of uh, process. I mean, it's an extra process you have to do for what? If you use the micro scale system that I showed you, you get the same results. That pulls the 
the decal to the vehicle and then you clear with the uh, testers dual coat 1260 and you're going to get the same results no need to pre-shade because the pastels as you'll see in this video give you the same results at the end and even quicker because you're using a brush you don't have to worry about overspray or what have you and if it gets out of hand i'm going to show you in this video a lot of people tell me oh my god i overdid it and everything you can overdo it but i'm going to show you in this video how to adjust to bring it back to what you want it to do everything has its solution okay nevertheless here's the video and then i'll catch you at the end the panzer keel out okay and here we are this is how we are going to weather our aircraft uh, now understand that i've done the video like i said earlier where i've shown you how to do armor and uh the armor it depends on how much usage and weathering you want to show is going to determine how many coats of wash you put on it and how much pastel powder now you have to take into account that this aircraft is a soviet la5 fn and it operated on the eastern front and if you know anything you will understand from reading history that everything on the eastern front for some reason got more mucked and mired more dirty more used more busted up because conditions whether it be the roads or the air fields were primitive compared to the european west they basically operated uh out of you know dirt and grass and and dried up uh, uh lake beds and and what have you so the aircraft were more robust the airfields were more robust and therefore the aircraft got more weathered more dirty now that being said i'm going to give this particular aircraft a little more weathering than i normally do my german aircraft that i've operated on the western front but that being said i'm not going to give it as much weathering as i do armor i never do that uh the reason being is because the aircraft has more intricate details that i want you to see that if you were to weather it really badly you would lose sight of a lot of those details now if you're going to put the aircraft in a diorama then i have no issue there where you want to do whatever you want to do normally i don't weather as harsh as armor because i want you to see the intricate details of the aircraft and what it entailed to build this aircraft now uh, that being said every aircraft i do is done the same way and i'm going to put picture examples at the end here it gets a wash of black this will get a wash of black and uh, again the black being to me is black xf1 and it'll get an initial wash of black if you're modeling a white camouflaged aircraft in a snow field or what have you then you don't really want to go with the black unless you're going to really weather it really bad if you're going to just if you want to show a good detail and some weathering I would suggest go with a either Tamiya XF24 dark gray or a lighter gray of that shade maybe a, a I don't know to me a light gray to me a medium gray I don't remember the numbers on those as a they're in my box and I don't really want to dig them out right now now uh, I if you if you notice I have left the wings off and also the main landing gear it's on toothpicks here I will be doing the landing gear separate because I really want to get in to the details later with pastels this is going to be the same way as our armor we're going to hit it with a wash and then we're going to hit all of these little details with pastel powder and it'll really bring it out later on really subtly uh, the landing gear if you can see I scratch built the landing gear doors because this is the hobby craft kit and the hobby craft kit landing gear doors are horrible also the canopy just the rear canopy has been put on and the reason being because there's an armored a glass armored shield behind there and uh, um, I didn't really want to wait until the end and also because of the stripes that have to be painted on the white stripe here if you notice the white stripe here actually protrudes onto the canopy frame so therefore that's why that canopy was glued there otherwise I would have waited till the aircraft was done as I have with the front 
canopy and the main sliding canopy here will get weathered right now. Now, for the spinner, since it's white, we are going to go with a, a either a gray or a to me a medium gray, a, a except 24 dark gray or to me a medium gray because I do not really want to muck it all up as much as possible. I want to give you a weathered look, but I want the details to be showing. Um, later on, we're going to hit the exhaust panel with pastels and you'll see uh, the effects that it brings. Um, the main guns, the cannons here, the SHVAK, I will not be putting gun stains. Um, the more pictures I look, the more the less gun stains I see. So I will not be putting gun stains. But all of the details that can be highlighted with pastels are going to be highlighted with pastels. Uh, like I said, we're going to hit it with Tamiya Except One, a black wash. And uh, the wings have also been left off, so the rear wings will get hit on the bottom first. And then the rudder has also been left off, so that will be done on the, uh, on its own over here and also the warming veins that go behind the propeller all of this stuff will be done on its own so what we're going to do first is we're going to hit it we're going to let it dry overnight and then tomorrow when it's all nice and dry we're going to hit it with our black pastel powder and uh, you'll see that it'll give us a nice result every single aircraft i've done every single one and if you know me from the Facebook modeling pages, the the, the Pro Modeler JV44 Dora D11, the Pips Priller BF1093 in Battle of the Britain Camel, every single aircraft I've ever done is done in this same way. Now I've done some Africa Corps, uh, some aircraft that served in Africa, not Africa Corps, but that served in North Africa. And if you're going to do aircraft that served in North Africa, the the main wash will not be except one uh, flat black it'll be flat brown you want to get a brownish tone to the aircraft because of the sand and the light colored uh, 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 elements that it operated in and I will show you some examples of what those aircraft look like in this video nevertheless let's get started here now we proceed again uh, with our thick sable this is a focal three eight uh 66 ox this has been with me for i don't know maybe 20 years got it about 20 years ago this is what i do my washes with and uh, the way we proceed is we're gonna move this out of the way this side of the way and bring our water here we shaker paint remember you don't need a lot normally what I do just the, the cap and I'll put the brush in there and I'll take all of the paint that's in the cap and put it in here and you see that gives us our tone now remember you don't really need a lot of paint because black is very color uh, covering color uh, we'll go back in here and uh, we'll grab the rest of the paint in here and put it in here and uh, we should be pretty good now some of you have uh, sent me messages and said oh wow I overdid it or whatever well if you feel that you've overdone it then what you want to do is you want to take a a synthetic heavy bristle brush and I'll show you right now and rub it fast across the surface of the pastel powder that you want to remove it's not going to remove it completely but it will remove a lot of it this is what I'm talking about this is a synthetic stiff bristle brush and you you just move it really fast and it will remove a lot of it it's not going to remove all of it but don't panic because there is no wrong or right I'll show you the end results and you can see okay once we've mixed our wash we're going to proceed to do the underside first now I've 
put this on toothpicks because I'm going to stand it up so that the wash doesn't get sucked up by let me move this out of the way so that the wash doesn't get sucked up by the towel here so it can dry and then I can continue to do the top part even faster so we're gonna pull it off of our stand here and I'm gonna show you the bottom and what we're gonna do again it's very simple no it doesn't it's not a rocket science we're going to take our brush and just brush it all the way across there is no right or wrong let it seep into everything it's not gonna look ugly when it's done it's not gonna look there is no panic mode trust me everything can be fixed there's nothing here that cannot be fixed everything can be fixed there's no right or wrong and you want to get an even coat that's why I love this brush this brush gives you long bold strokes I want to get in here a little bit it's not really gonna show but um you know you still wanna you, you don't wanna you don't want it dripping because it'll accumulate on top and dry and then yeah it'll it won't give you the effect that you need but in here is pretty good I'll get the wheel make sure you get the main wheel get all the get it in there really good because this is what's going to hold this is what's going to hold the pastel powder later when you go to pastel everything make sure you get everything off don't panic there's no right or wrong it's not gonna look ugly there's no you you show me an airplane that was very uniformly dirty and I'll tell you where you're full of it there's no right or wrong do not panic okay so that is the bottom and why wow, it looks like in one pass we're gonna be able to do I'll get the oil cooler here really nice see how it's accumulating right here on the bump right here you're gonna be able to pastel that and it's gonna bring that detail out even though like a uh, guy was asking me you know when I was showing the door oh the engine part and I understand that but I I fix my aircraft permanently to all my bases so you don't really see the bottom but I mean whatever you can see it'll look good you know and at least you'll know it's there so yeah you know here we are and uh, we're putting everything and again there is no right or wrong guys there's no right or wrong see how nice that looks I don't know if you can see it but it's accumulating really nice here now the aircraft has been drying for about a good month you don't have to wait a month I waited because um, I was working on other projects and uh, I'm trying to get this other diorama out and uh, so I've been really focusing on that but it's time to finish this because uh, it's been sitting around for a while but nevertheless this is how we're doing it now we're gonna stand it up on our stands so that we can do the top part even with the bottom and what we want to do here is uh, we want to put it like this let's see if this works yeah it worked all right let's uh pull it forward some because too far back spread them out and let's proceed to do the whole airplane now this is beautiful this is working out beautiful we go ahead and we proceed to do the whole airplane now it might beat up at first because it does not how can I tell you the flat is oil based and this is acrylic so it might beat up so you might have to give it a couple of passes but that's okay that's all right and uh, here where the exhaust is gonna be if you want to put extra don't have a problem with that because you're gonna get a line of, of pastel powder that goes through there but you can see it already accumulating 
and all the little nooks and crannies and the crevices and then later on our pastels are just going to bring everything out there is no right or wrong gentlemen ladies and gentlemen and again every aircraft I do is done this same way and I know I'm going to get the naysayers or whatever but again I'm doing these videos because my friends from Facebook have asked me to do them they like the results I get with my aircraft and I'm I'm about cutting time and expenses and uh, you know I don't gloss my aircraft to put the decals on I use the micro scale system as I showed on the armor and this is the same way and you can see it looks like they're painted on they're in excellent position and uh, I was actually going to do the video on this aircraft but I explained in the in the video that this decal which is just one decal broke into a million pieces so I would have been scrambling on video to fix it and uh, I'd rather use something else and you want to get the wheel again because we're going to hit it with pastel powder and it's going to bring out all the details but see how nice and uniform everything's turning out right here and remember it might look really dark right now but when it dries up it'll lighten up now let's turn it let's turn her around and uh, do the other side this this side now even the cockpit inside I've done I've weathered it like this with with a, a black wash and pastel powders and I'll show you pictures of the cockpit in here you can't see it from out here but I'll show you pictures of the cockpit in the video uh, where I'll show the finished airplane also in this video but you want to just put it on sparingly don't be scared there is no right or wrong you can't mess it up you can't say oh wow I put too much I know some people tell me oh my god I put too much really check out some pictures some airplanes were caked on the eastern front some armor was caked there is no right or wrong just don't panic and proceed and trust me it, what you think you're messing up the average person that's going to look at your model is going to actually think it looks really cool <laughs> and i've just noticed that um i've messed up and people don't even see the mistakes and they think it's great everything's great and that's cool because you're the only one that really knows where you've done your boo-boos but uh, there's always a fixture to everything but anyway let's get uh these lines right here are going to really come out the the cannon the cannon, uh, cannon uh, wells here awesome just awesome you know yeah, all of this stuff you gonna... see how quick this is happening I mean this is pretty much I think it's gonna take go in one in one coat in one shot now the the heat panels here again uh, for the exhaust they're really gonna get uh, chalked up with the pastel powder um, because they really got beat up from all the exhaust coming out of there and you're gonna see it later Like I said, there's no right or wrong. You can't mess it up. Nobody can tell you it's wrong. People tell me no. <laughs> what do you mean no? Watch, watch pictures. For anything you can tell me that it was a certain way, I'll show you pictures of how it was a different way. Somebody told me that, you know, this is not hard edge camo or whatever. Well, I, and the, like I said, I'm going to stop doing this, but I posted pictures of the real airplane with Popkov standing next to it and it's hard edge camel and then the guy stopped arguing but you know I'm not gonna do that for every single project that I do I do my homework um, I know that there's some people that think that they know exactly everything um, 
I don't. I'm willing to learn, but I do my research. I do do my research as much as I can before I put out a model. And I uh, want to get it as correct as possible. I am human, and I do make errors, and I'm not perfect. Um, but I feel that everything that I put out, I study, and I look into well before... I put it out so that you can get an accurate feel and look as to what it might have looked like. See how really nice, I don't know if you could see that, but these lines are already starting to pop up right here. Once we hit it with our pastels, that's really going to look really nice. Yeah, it's going to go in one shot, guys. Beautiful. This thing will be done tomorrow. Now... A lot of people, they're like, oh my goodness, I put too much. What am I going to do? Do not panic. No matter what happens, never panic. Because in a model, like anything else, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. You don't believe me? Look at the emblems right here. And tell me if it looks good. I know it looks good. But I will tell you, when I mask the plane off, to paint the heat panels some of the tape stuck to that and the original when I pulled it out the original logo came off so I had to buy the kit all over again just to get that logo because the micro scale decals logo is different and I like the logo that comes the order of Lennon logo that comes in the kit so I had to buy it and re decal right there and re clear right there with testers 1260 spray and it came out just as if I had sprayed the whole airplane, you can't tell the difference. So never panic. Everything has its fixture. Everything can be fixed. Every single thing can be repaired. There is no right or wrong. Do not panic. And it's just modeling. So let's have fun. And uh, let's get some models out. I'm all about let's do it fast. Let's do it accurate. Let's do it nice. Let's do it with a lot of detail. Let's do it cheap. And let's get to the to the next one. And again, I do every single aircraft the same way as you're looking at me right here. Unless it's in, in Africa, then the wash would be flat brown to me, a flat brown to begin with. I will use black pastel in and around the exhaust in the parts that really get dirty in an Africa aircraft. As you'll see, I'm, uh, I'm right now I'm working on a Helmut Wick Battle of Britain, but I'm also going to do the JG27 BF109E with all of the with all of the uh, patch, you know, olive green patches and uh, all of that stuff, Africa uh, camouflage, early Africa camouflage. And uh, I have, I had done that in 72 scale in an airfix. I'm doing it in a Tamiya now. So that's coming up. But there it is. I mean, it, it took the wash really nice. And again, the wash is because it is an acrylic paint, so it's going to dry as it's drying right here already nice and dry and a little rough and it'll hold it'll hold the pastel powder later when you hit it so the aircraft is done here that's what we're going with now we'll proceed to do our wings and our rudder and our warming vanes the thing that sits behind the propeller on the LE 5 series and the LE 7 series it was not a cooling fan people think it's a cooling fan no the conditions on the eastern front in the winter called for the engines to warm up as quickly as possible in sub-zero weather. And these would close up and let the engine heat up faster. Once the engine heated up, the pilot would then turn a knob and mechanically retract them behind the propeller. It was weird, but I have video to that and I'll post it on the video of the finished airplane. But nevertheless, look how nice that's going to look. Look at, look at all the veins right there grabbing the Tamiya flat back. You see that? I don't know if you can see that, but you see that? That's going to look real nice when we go to pastel the wings later on. Very nice. There is no right or wrong. And therefore, do not panic. Do not think that you're doing it wrong. Do not let anybody tell you, oh, that doesn't go like that or whatever. Naturally, if you're going to do it hot pink, I would tell you, yeah, yeah, that's not right. But, you know, there was no hot pink aircraft fighting on the Eastern Front. But 
there is nothing wrong somebody told me well the color and this and that okay well first of all the russians unlike the germans did not document their federal colors rlm neither or like any of the western allies or whatever no they just uh there's very vague and i mean vague uh information on the color but i've seen colored photographs and there are fully restored uh examples of soviet aircraft that are flying now some that were restored by their government and therefore they should know what the color content and the shading is and now we, we're going to do our we're going to do our rudder here one do one side first and then the other side because what will happen is when you go to lay it down it, it'll suck up the wash on the other side so you do one side first but look how nice that look at huh look at that it's just grabbing all of the all of the Tamiya XF black beautiful that's gonna be really nice when we're done with it and uh, the warming veins just you wanna you want to get away it don't matter on this one if it sits on the towel you just want to make sure that it gets in all the nooks and crannies so later on you can bring out highlights with your pastels and they can look more natural sitting behind the propeller now we're going to do our front canopy here's our front windscreen canopy now this was one of the hardest canopies to mask uh, I used a squadron vacuum form so it wasn't as sturdy and as stiff as the kit one so it was really hard to get this thing right um, so I did my best might not be perfect but eh, it's gonna do it's it's just a hobby craft kit <laughs> people go why do you say that no I know but if you look I've done everything to the hobby craft kit I corrected it I corrected the wings I did it as much as I possibly could I put metal tubing for the cannons in there it's gonna be a really nice model when it's done but see how nice that see how nice that's taking that that's really nice right there beautiful and the canopy's done this is gonna go so quick now we're going to put our uh, we're gonna put our landing gear here and the landing gear really got beat up because it took all of the grass all of the dirt while the planes taking off so get it in there really nice and mucked up be careful not to get it on the other side all of the nooks and crannies we just want to fill all the nooks and crannies and everything up really fill it up because we're gonna bring out all the good detail after very smooth this guy now get in there get in there get in there I love this brush this brush is awesome I hope it lasts a hundred years because and it's well made it looks like it will but I just love the way it performs Floatwell is just a bomb and I can't find them anywhere anymore I don't even know if they're still in business and uh, I bought this at a hobby shop about, I don't know, 18 years ago. But it's beautiful sable brush. You get in there. Get in there. Make sure this is... It doesn't matter because it's going to be nice and dirty. And that's what we want. Nice and dirty. Get that in there. Now we'll proceed with the main canopy. The spinner is going to be done at the end because we're probably going to hit one more uh, coat on these with this black. And then we're going to discard it and get the gray going for the spinner. Nice and uniform. 
the canopy was really hard because it's really flexible, really weak, really... It, it has... I mean, it was worse than... I've done the Mesher Smith ones. And this thing was really bending all over the place. It was really hard. But I got it done. And I'm pretty proud of that. But you can see... This is this is what we do, just like this, and then we're gonna hit it with pastel. This will not get hit with pastel. I'm just the lines and all of the raised detail on the kit. Now we're gonna wait till this dries, and then we'll proceed to do the other side. Okay, now we're gonna do the other side here of our wings rudder and our landing gear and we're going to be finished then we will proceed to do the spinner and we're pretty much done it's just putting it all back together now here is the rudder and we just run across and let the paint just get in all the nooks and crannies here we don't really want to dirty the white too much Put it down there. Now we'll do our wing. Get all our black in there. Mix the paint really nice. You'll see once we hit it with the pastels. All of this detail in here is going to really pop up. No, it's not. It's not the highest altitude, but it was premier plane. Almost the highest. Yeah. I like talking to myself sometimes, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, and you can see how... All of this detail in here, all of these rivet holes and all of these veins for the wings and all of that stuff, really going to come out once we hit it with our pastels. Now we'll do the other side of the landing gear and again there's no right or wrong gentlemen ladies and gentlemen there's just no right or wrong this really gets really dirty because it takes all of the beating all of the beating of the takeoffs and landings and well anyway you get the picture but once we hit it with the pastels really nice let's hit our uh, warming veins again in the little nooks and crannies get the wash in there And uh, make it look really nice and uniform with the rest of the airplane. And there we have it. The canopy, the wings, the aircraft, the wings, the canopies, the canopies over here, the wings, the rudder, and the landing gear have been washed. This is the only wash I'm going to use as it is a summer scheme. If it was, if you want to have it operating in snow, I would hit it with the black. If it's this color, unless you want to, uh, you have a white camouflaged aircraft. If it's this color, I hit it with the black and then a very light wash of white or light gray to lighten everything up and really make it look like uh, the moisture and, and stuff like that. Um, but it's a summer camo scheme. 
it's a summer airplane and this is what we're gonna go with next we're gonna make a wash to do the spinner okay now we're gonna give a wash we're gonna apply a wash to our spinner and it's white so therefore I'm not going with the Tamiya XF flat black XF1 flat black again the white and if it was a white camel scheme I would use a very light coat of Tamiya XF24 dark gray as you can see here it's gonna be a very light coat because I really don't want to weather it super super weathered if you desire a more weathered look then you would apply two or three more coats of wash and really get heavy with the pastels and it, the same goes for that but I'm gonna give you a light weathered look and uh, basically don't really want to muck it all up you can if you like but I like to keep my stuff again a small amount of water we get our cap we put our brush in there and get everything in the cap okay so that was not enough <laughs> all right so then now we will proceed to dip it in our there we go that's what I want and again there is no right or wrong there is no this and that we just want to we just want to make sure that the detail like the ring around the tube that comes out of the middle of the spinner is highlighted the tube is going to be highlighted so therefore we're not looking to really muck it all up the pastels will give you a, a nice look when it's done yeah we will proceed to uniformly douse it all up like so even the middle of the tube because you're gonna really bring that detail out when we use our pastels And again, we don't really want too much because I don't want to show a really severe weathered look. I just want enough on there to grab the pastel powder. That's it. In a nutshell, that's it. Just enough to grab the pastel powder not really to dirty it all up and that's it we are done now we put the airplane together and then we'll hit it with pastels and then we will apply it to our base that is coming up in the next segment
Okay, here is now our LA5FN Hobbycraft unmasked. The wings in the back have been put on, the rudder has been put on. I unmasked the rear canopy that's already on the aircraft. In there you can see all of the extra work I did. The radio equipment behind the cockpit. Remember this is the Hobbycraft kit. It's got a True Details cockpit but behind that I had to scratch build all the radio equipment. I had to scratch build the armored glass cover that goes behind the pilot. I don't know if you can see that there but I'm, I will be taking pictures and posting them at the end of this video. And uh, we're now ready to... We gave the wash already earlier in this segment. Now we're going to do our pastels and then we're going to be done with the airplane. And the next step would, will be the gun sight. I will uh, install the gun sight. I will install the the cannon charger handles that go in there, and then the the front windshield, and then the canopy slid back there, and then the antenna, the landing gear will come last, and then it'll be permanently mounted to its base. Now the only two colors I'm going to use here are black and gray. I'm going to use gray very lightly for the spinner and for some of the bottom of the airplane. Some of it will go black, most of it will be gray. You want to do gray, light gray to a darker gray where there is a light camouflage color and black. Uh, naturally some things are going to just go all black and uh, you'll see the I think you'll like the results of it and what have you at the end of this video somebody asked me for the list of the pastels that I use and to be honest with you I don't know if some of them are still in production since the pastels I have are from 1997 and the colors you're you don't have to get the exact colors that I have get something close to it and then you can mix your colors it's not a big deal just get something close to it. I will be showing you stick by stick what's on the stick. Uh, some of them are Windsor Newton. Some of them are Novell. Uh, the Windsor Newton ones, some of them are so used up that the name's no longer uh, readable. But the number to that stick is. And you can Google the number and, and find the color if you need to have the exact same color. Again, it, it doesn't have to be the exact same color. It can just be a similar color because you you're, you'll find that when you go to brown you'll have like 20 shades of brown so just get something that's close to it i have like four or five different shades of brown to make different color shades of ground or what have you but black is black gray is gray and white is white i have a couple of sets of, of, of uh, orange for rust this will not get that much rust as most of these airplanes the russian airplanes only from the cockpit forward was there steel and then all of this was wood which is why they had such exceptional performance uh, these airplanes when they came on the scene uh, were equal to the the, mo the late model uh, folk wolves that were that the Germans were flying and uh, they were actually better than the measurements except at the highest altitudes but uh, German pilots were told never to engage this or the LA-7 below 15,000 feet because they were just going to lose in a dogfight. But nevertheless, it, it's, it was an exceptional airplane. I loved building it. I loved doing the research to find everything because there's very little of it. And I had a lot of fun with it. I bought the Svesta kit and I'm going to do one more in, in Svesta. This is Hobbycraft. I'm going to do one more in Svesta, one more camel scheme that I like. And then uh, that's going to be it for my LA-5 series. I am getting one LA-7 Gavia and I will do the LA-7, one LA-7 and then I'll do a couple of yaks. Uh, it just depends on how much time and you know where I can fit them in and what have you. But nevertheless, let's get started. We're going to proceed with uh, hitting the bottom first. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the spinner right now. Because the spinner does not need to be there for now.
Okay. I removed the spinner and we're going to proceed. What we're going to do first is we're going to hit the bottom. And uh, since the bottom is a very light blue, we're going to hit it with gray predominantly. And uh, here's the brush I'm using. You don't have to use this. You can use a stubbier brush. But I like this because it has stiff bristles. And we're going to go right along the line. You see that? You see how it just brings the line out very subtly? It's going to look really nice. Not that you can really uh, look at the bottom when the airplane's done and mounted to the base. But... Some judges, and you'll know it's there, so it'll be for personal satisfaction. But the predominant thing here is going to be gray. See how it just brings it out? Remember, this is an eastern front aircraft, so it really got really mucked and mired. You're going to hit every line, and the pastel powder is starting to, the, the wash that we gave it is starting to grab all the little particles of the pastel powder and hold them. And that's what gives you your line here. That's what starts to give you your line. There is no right or wrong. You can't mess it up. Some people get mad because I say that. Well, show me some kind of equipment used in battle. And show me where they all get uniformly dirty in the same spot, at the same way, in the same shape. And I'll tell you where you're wrong. Now, somebody told me the other day, oh man, I, I overdid it and what can I do? Don't panic. There is no right or wrong. Don't panic, but I'm going to show you right now. I kind of don't like that. So you use your stiff brush and... It takes it out subtly. I'll show you how to adjust. Because you can adjust with a lighter pastel shade to lower the fuzz on that line. <clears throat> Everything has its stuff. Every single thing has a fixture. Don't worry. There is no right or wrong. No. Make sure the bristles get in there. See, starting to bring out the detail. And again, you don't really have to spend a lot of time down here because, it, I mean, I always, always permanently mount my aircraft to the base so it's not like they can pick it up to watch it or whatever some judges carry little mirrors or whatever but that's okay we're gonna do the the rib here show you how we bring out our rib
I have a stubby one that where the bristles have broken off and it's just a little stubby ball. Let's try it out and see. It's perfect for the hole. See how it just gets the holes. Let me see if I can trim it. Just. See how it brings the holes out, the highlight of the holes? Now, I'm going to see if I can get a sharp line. Yes. Again. See that? That's a sharper line than on that side. And I'll show you how to adjust. See how I just brought that rib out? Very subtly. I mean, there's no highlighting or nothing. It's just the shadows bring everything out, bring all the detail out. Every single aircraft I do is done in this form. I'm going to do well, there is just a lot of There's a lot of detail at the bottom of these wings. I've been going at it pretty sloppy. I'm going to try to get more detail. The reason I like this is because it's got stiff bristles and you can get them right in the inside the line. Whereas this will give you a big stubby line, very straight. And I'll show you how to adjust that after. But this gives you a more feathered, straight look, which is more natural look. See? Now it just paints that line. Remember guys, this is gray because black would just be too harsh down here. Too much. Now near the oil cooler, I am going to put black because oil seeps out of there. Now let's highlight our holes. You see that? You see that? Now, take a little bit of your grain and in here dirty it up. That in turn will bring the rib detail out
very, very subtle. See that? Mm. Don't panic if it's a little too harsh. We're going to even them all out. See, it's starting to come alive. Look at all the holes here that have been highlighted. We'll take a stiff bristle brush. Look at all the ribs highlighted just by dirtying the indented part. See that? And if you want, you can take this like that. When the pesto starts running out, it goes really nice and deep in there. And then, to adjust it, run your stiff bristle brush on it. And it lightens it up and just shows you the outline of it. You see that? There's a lot of little holes here that I'm going to try to do. Because uh, I think, yeah, it might, it might need it because... And I mean, there's a lot of detail on the bottom of these wings, which is really good for hobby craft. We're going to do our back line right now. See that? I don't know if you can see that, but it's coming out really nice. We'll highlight some holes. Let's run along that line there. See that? And then we'll adjust.
there's no right or wrong guys no right or wrong and what we're gonna do to go a little faster since this is the bottom just uh, highlight some of these homes I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do every single little hole there's hundreds of them down here but I'm tracing every little line and then You can see the holes are really popping out here. And they're very subtly highlighted. The little stubby, don't throw them away because this one lost all its bristles, but it has a little stubby ball of bristles, and that's what I use for the holes. And for this type of application here. I mean, you know, it's beautiful. Now, I'm going to show you at the top. At the top, we're mainly going to use black. Because of the dark gray nature of the model. And what we're going to do here is dip our deal here in the black. Pick up our model. What I like about oil pastels is that they allow you to handle the model and they won't come off just for no reason. And we'll proceed to highlight our holes <laughs> and then our line and this is black this is not green see how nice that is see how it outlined it Dip a little more. You see that? See how nice that rib is popping out? And we'll proceed in highlighting some more holes. Then we'll run along our line there. Again, there's no right or wrong, guys. You see that? See how it brought out that rib? Very naturally, very subtly. And if you want to adjust it, just... You see here the filler cap 
the holes where the wings were being held. Very nice. This is all in black up here. We're going to use nothing but black up here. Look at how the highlighting, well not actually the highlighting, the shadowing with the black actually brought this rib out very naturally, very subtly without any highlighting needed to be done. Every single aircraft I do is done this exact way and you'll see pictures of my finished results. A lot of people will start saying no it's not right like when I said uh, I never put gloss on the airplane to put the decals on I use the microscale system because it gives it a sheen and only in late war airplanes and the Western Allies and the Western uh, 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 squadrons really polish their airplanes at the end of the war to suck out as much juice but I mean everything on the Eastern Front was pretty much dull coat and I know I'm gonna get some arguments of that and everything but I've got colored pictures so I don't really like the sheen that spraying the gloss coat under gives you because no matter how much dull coat you spray it stays it, it stays with a sheen I mean this is gonna look so nice when it's done see how it's highlighting that slat And pretty much, that's how we're going to do with the whole airplane. The little short stubble gives you a lot of control to get right in the, in the line that you need to get. Outline this line right now. See that? See how nice that looks? Look at that. Look how it makes it just jump out naturally. See how I made those rivets just pop out? And what's happening is that the wash we gave it with a Tamiya flat black, parts of the flat black thinly are holding on there and since it's a dull, flat, rough black, it's holding, it holds the pastel really nice to the model. You see that? The whole model will be done in this fashion.
so I've done pretty much put the plane together and the rudders on the wings are on and the plane's been pretty much done right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do one of the landing gears I've already done one you can see how nice the pastels bring out all the detail of the ribs on the strut and all that is is black pastel powder being held by the Tamiya wash this is the cover what the cover looks like with weathering now we're gonna do this one to show you what we're gonna do is I've got my stubby brush that I used to outline everything that's black and it's really stubby that it used to have hair but they're really just really at a minimum now you can barely see them in there really stubby and then I have one that was going bad but it's a little more pointy and the pointier one I'm gonna use to get in the thin 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 line right here and right here the stubbier one I'm gonna use on this brace and this brace and down here where it can fit and we'll do that now so you can see you can actually see some of the wash in there the black wash and now with the highlighting of the black we're really gonna bring out the detail and what we're gonna do here is the bottom here there's no right or wrong just go below it see that and then uh, we're gonna hit up here let me see if I can bring the light in a little bit so you can see there we go and uh, this rib right here you can see right under the rib it's highlighting the rib and then the edge of the brake line here really good in that and see how it brings it out really nice now you might think that this is a little too dark here but we're gonna adjust it with our bigger bristle brush and brush some of it off I go right at the edge of the rubber boot here like that and then I'll hold this up here and do the edge see how the lines just come out they just pop out now the doors the covers have flaps too they have ribs so we'll put black on the indentations and then I'm gonna show you how we're gonna bring out the we're gonna just bring out all the detail on it now we're gonna get our skinnier pointier one put that in the pastel and then we're gonna proceed to get the tiny little to get the tiny little lines like that one like that one rub it fast put it in again if you need to put it in some more there's no right or wrong a lot of people don't like when I say that there's no right or wrong there isn't Show me one piece of military equipment that got dirty in a uniform manner as a, equal to another one. Exactly the same, and I'll tell you where you're full of it. Everything that could happen, happened, and everything's possible. And I know that a lot of the purists, in whatever faction that you're in, whatever capacity, airplanes, armor, ships... I know you don't like that, but I'm sorry. It's the truth. 
A lot of the old timers don't like it. They don't like the new. They don't like progress. They want it, and I understand they want it like they had it forever. Okay, I missed a couple of ribs on this one, so we're gonna do them right now. Right here. See how the detail just starts popping out? The wash holds the pastel in and then the indentations get darker making the ribs lighter. And I'm going to show you how to adjust right now to get a desired effect in case some people go, wow I overdid it. Well, then you adjust with another color. That's all you have to do. Adjust with a lighter color. Yeah. How nice that is. Now, we're gonna do this guy. Somewhere. And now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our big bristle brush and kind of like run it across and wipe off the excess and that gives you the subtle very subtle very subtle highlight it look you see that look at how nice look at how nice the brake line pops out right here look at it Look at how nice that shadowing brings out that brake line. Same thing over here. We're going to use our big brush and brush up the excess. That's all. See that? Very nice. Look at that brake line. Very nice. Now let's turn it over and brush off the excess here. These are going to go in next. And then the airplane is going to be kind of finished. I'll probably attach it to the base and then finish off with the front windshield. I got a build the gun sight from scratch still but uh, pretty much done the airplane's pretty much done now I'm gonna show you how to adjust and again at the end of this video I'll show you each and every single stick of pastel somebody asked me for a list but I really am super lazy to write out a list so I'd rather just show you a lot of these pastels aren't available anymore so get a similar color it does not need to be the exact same color you can adjust and tweak it to whatever colors you need by mixing them anyway i will show you at the end of the thing but <clears throat> for now we're just gonna adjust and highlight this is how we adjust and this is how we subtly highlight these are my light pastels for faded and lightning work. I adjust using a synthetic brush that I only use on light colored pastels and I will use predominantly the, the lightest almost white shade. <clears throat> and you don't want to put a lot just kind of dip your brush into it and shake off the excess. And what we're going to do is we're going to get our, I mean it really doesn't need that much, but we're going to see if we can lighten up some more of the ribs, yes, 
and what you want to do is you don't want to poke into it because you'll poke the black stuff out run it flat across and what it does is starts accumulating just a little bit but at the same time lightening and highlighting the area that you're running it across and at first it'll seem like nothing's happening but once you see the overall look at how nice that is you see that about all all of the detail without having to really highlight it with paint and make it look like a cartoon because that's what it, highlighting with paint does it makes it look like a cartoon yeah i don't like that i like a more natural look the ribs in here we're going to run it flat across just barely blow the excess off once in a while see that look at that rib see how it just brought it out really subtly the model's gonna look real nice when we're done with it that's what this gives you that's what the effect of pastels give you natural highlighting not it doesn't look like a cartoon when you're done and the brush allows you to apply it in a very precise manner to exactly where you need it it's kind of like painting but see that look at that look at those ribs just pop out very nice and we'll put a little bit on the back here now what I did with the airplane is <clears throat> you can see you can see here where all of this ribbing here I ran this flat across it's not highlighted but it's subtly highlighted and you'll get the light color accumulating on the ribs and it brings them out naturally run it flat just run it flat I did the rudder flat that's how you do it flat and it brings out look at that it brings out all of the detail without it even appearing to bring out all of the detail I still have to do this side and what I did first if you if you look here and uh, let's see what I did is I put very minute brushed with very minute powder black in there and now we're going to highlight by just running across flat and again this is so subtle that when you're done it really brings out the it really brings the detail out remember it's very got very very little power but the powder it has from all the times I've used it is accumulating on the rib now look at that look at that see very subtly very subtle but it works really super nice I've already done these ribs here that you can see this rib here on this side that you can see 
and uh, it's coming out very nice. The finished model is coming out very nice. What we're going to do now is we're going to finish off the rudder. Here. Shake, shake the excess off. And just proceed to run flat across the flat parts and the bulky parts. down here across the back across the top and pretty much that's it we're done now what we're gonna do to take the excess off we're gonna run our stiff brush now it's already working. Look at the rudder. Just look at the rudder. Look at the ribs and look at the indentations. Look at the ribs here. Look at the indentation there. Look at how nice that looks. I highlighted this. See how it just brings it out, but you don't even know that it's bringing it out because it's not paint. It does not look like a cartoon that you've highlighted every. Look at the Canon the cannon uh, front shields here see that now I had overdone it and I have put a lot of black here on this line here and I remember someone said oh my goodness how do you do it again you get the lightest color you can shake up excess and then you proceed to just cover up the old black and then run it across the seam flat and the pastel will do the rest the pastel will do the rest and then what you want to do it run it flat across and it gets highlighted and you'll see the shadow around it you'll see the shadow around it you see that the plane's done I'm just giving it the last touches and what I'll do is I'll give it a light dusting after with this white or a little bit light, a darker but very light pastel so that I can adjust everything uh, I'm gonna show you the bottom remember the bottom look at that look at all the detail there look at that. look at all the detail you're not going to really see a lot of it because it's going to be permanently attached to the base but i'll know it's there and if the judges want to put a little mirror under there i'm going to add just a little bit on this right here because there's a lot and you can see how it works and you just want to go parallel to the area and in the dark down the what I love about the brush is that you can pretty much control everything how where it goes we're going to bring out these up uh, these ribs that the oil cooler has so that they look really good
again at the end of the video look how nice that is at the end of the video I'm going to show you the pastel colors really slow so you can jot them down and again you don't have to find the exact same ones just something similar and then just adjust it to your taste of whatever you want to do just turn it this way get an angle to do what I need to do so you're gonna have to just bear with me for this right now the painted oil cooler area let me adjust this camera anyway the airplane's pretty much done you can see in here in the cockpit that The seat was done the same way, and the seat belts highlighted the same exact way. Nevertheless, the aircraft appears to be done. All we need is the front windshield. I'm going to scratch build a gun sight. Put in the gun primers. And attach the front windshield and attach the canopy. And the antenna. And then attach it to the base and we're pretty much done. pretty much done I wanted to show you the no. I'll take some good pictures and close-ups of it once it's done but you can also like I don't like the shot, the sheen here, so you dip the big bristle brush and you just proceed to, and it'll dole out the sheen and lighten everything up. And if you want, you can even hit it a little harsher with this in flat mode. I was gra I was holding the airplane from here and I just don't like that sheen that's there and we're gonna take it out. All I have to do is just run it. And the pastel accumulates there and it starts doling everything out. Blend it in.
And again, we're pretty much done here. Now we'll proceed to attach our landing gear and we'll attach our propeller and again I'm gonna build a, a, a scratch built gun sight and we're pretty much done that shouldn't take too long and that's how we weather our airplane oh. This is the last segment in our aircraft weathering. The LA-5FN is done. I'm giving it the last finishing touches and what I'm going to show you in this segment is we showed you how to highlight with the light pastel here and the dark pastel here. A lot of you have told me that you've overdone the dark pastel and I told you that more or less how to take it out well I'm gonna show you how to adjust now so that you can adjust when you overdo it first you take a stiff bristle brush and I'm gonna show you on this part here because I've overdone it right in this area here let me see if I can um, let me see if I can um, Zoom in a little more. There we go. And what you do is you take your brush and lightly brush it across, getting all the excess off and kind of blending it actually. And now what you want to do is, if you can see how dark it is right here and I went up the line, you take your lightest pastel that you have and at the end of this video I'm going to show you all the sticks and everything but I'm going to move this to the side your lightest pastel right here and you dip your brush in it but don't pick up too much shake the excess off you're going to highlight and you're going to adjust at the same time now this part here is the exit so just go parallel to it it's not gonna go away right away but as the pastel gets air and dries it's going to blend it a little more and that's how you're going to adjust if it's really dark get a little more and right on top parallel to it there is no right or wrong I'm sure there was a couple of planes with smudges in the field but you can see how we've adjusted there can you see that it's starting to erase the black and take over now if you erase all of the line then just go over it again with your dark line with your dark pastel this also serves for highlights to subtly highlight if you can see all the ribs right here I've highlighted all of the ribs by running it across flat remember there's hardly any powder left but what's left accumulates and you can see how it pops it out now you take your stiff bristle brush and just take the excess off and, it's, and it works to blend it in every single aircraft that I've done and I'm going to show you other examples of other aircraft that I've done is done in this way every single aircraft 
if you're doing North Africa, the wash is going to be light brown. The, the dark pastel is going to be brown. The light pastel is always going to be the light pastel. You're only going to do brown except in the engine area. The engine area will always get black because it gets grimy and oily and what have you. And this is the way we adjust and we highlight. Just straight across. Straight and it brings out all of the detail. The super light pastel starts accumulating on the highlighted spots on the high spots. And it shows you exactly. what you want to see and that's how we adjust and highlight at the same time see how nice that looks now and if you want to you, you know you can go until you you're satisfied with it I'm pretty satisfied with it because Airplanes on the eastern front, as it is, got really dirty. If you want to really, you just scrub it harder and closer. Get yourself a, a synthetic squared off brush so you can control the movement better. And that's pretty much it. We've gave it a wash of black. And then we went with our dark pastel in all of the little crevices and all of the low areas along these ribs here. And then we went with our highlight, very light pastel to highlight subtly all of the raised areas. Just run it across. You won't even tell that it's there and it just highlights it for you, which is natural, which is the way it is in real life. It does not look like a cartoon. It looks like naturally highlighted, naturally uh, dirty, naturally everything. You can see to effect. And I'm going to do a short video on this aircraft but I'm gonna put other aircraft in this video to show you examples of other aircraft that I've done in this particular manner just run it across and it starts accumulating and it gives you a nice faded look very subtle and that's what we want very subtle you can see here I've already hit the middle here and it brings out all of the indentations all of the rivet work in there see that it brings it all out really nice and gives you a nice looking model and this is how we do weathering on our aircraft every single aircraft that I've done and you'll see the other examples in this video at the end here has been done in this fashion every single one this is the hobby craft kit by the way it was a heck of a lot of work <laughs> but nevertheless I'm satisfied with it I won't be building another one as I have Zvezda LA5s which are way better look like they're green compared to this but it was fun I like the challenge I always like the challenge And I hope you had fun. I hope you learned. And again, get, send me any questions. A lot of people complain and a lot of people don't like my videos. They're not for everybody. This is the way I do it. A lot of people like my models. Well, this is the way I do every single model. Every single plane gets the wash of black to start with if it's in Europe. A wash of brown if it's in North Africa. And then it gets black pastel 
and uh, on the underside it got light gray on the underside because it is really light and therefore see the ribs on the oil cooler how nice they come out look at all of the detail under there just by running black pastel in there black wash at first to grab the pastel once the wash is dried it grabs the pastel nevertheless this is how we do our aircraft every single aircraft that you're going to see in this video has been done in that fashion in the same way the same exact way nothing's different and we're done with our LA-5 I'm glad I'm in a Battle of Britain group build on Facebook pages modeling World War II and I'm doing a Tamiya BF-109 E4 Helmut Wick I'm also doing a JV-44's Red 1 in Tamiya FW-190 and I'm also doing Walter Nowotny's White 8 BF-109 F4 Hasegawa I'm working on three of them at the same time actually I'm working on four aircraft I'm doing a MiG-17 in Polish markings too which is going to be coming out but this is what we've completed right now this is a uh, Popkov's uh, airplane I did not like the markings that came in the kit the hobby craft kit so I got aftermarket markings but this is the way we do it now for what I promised everybody be right back promised everybody this is the last segment of the video and I have had a lot of requests personal requests to know exactly what pastels I use and what the names are and the numbers and uh, there's so many requests that I didn't have time to make a list for each and every single one of you so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna show you right now the sticks of pastels that I use one by one remember you when you buy yours you might not find the same exact color get something close and then you can mix it you can sand them and mix them and and and, and tweak them to whatever you need they're not going to be exactly the same exact color you might not find them some of them might not be in production anymore predominantly i use windsor newton some of them are so used that the name has been pretty much uh, peeled away but the number of the stick is still there so that you can look up the number and google the number for there and uh if you find out let me know um what name was that or whatever but we're going to start with the black and the gray that i use and uh they come from a company called nouvelle car pastel the number is w006 it is my gray there it is nouvelle car pastel w006 and that is the one I used to do the gray. I sand it and uh, I have two sticks. Uh, I'm still on my first stick from 1998. See, here's my first stick from 1998. <laughs> Haven't finished it yet. Uh, the black is also Nouvelle Car. And uh, I bought these originally at a store that I've been notified is no longer here. But the black is Nouvelle Car 010 just get black there's going to be different shades of black and i just get black i also have a, a black in windsor newton and i'm going to show you the windsor newton right now 
So it, it black is black is black. The reason I like these is because they're oil pastels and therefore it stays on the model. It doesn't just blow off. Um, I got Ivory Black in Windsor Newton. The number is right there. 2880331AA. And there it is across the stick. 331331. That is the number to this pastel. That is a Windsor Newton pastel. Uh, for my rust on my armor, I have three different shades of orange that I use to mix. Um, again, see, I, the number has been erased. <laughs> and uh, it is a Nouvelle Pastel. Very bright orange. 030, I think it might be. Because there's a 03 there, but the zero, the other 0. This is the, the brightest orange I have. Then I tone down. I have three different shades that I use to mix for my rust. And this is the second shade. More toned down. More brownish. It's also a Novell Pastel. The number has been completely gone. So just get three different shades of orange. One really bright. One more darker. And then the last one I use is this one. For my... Oh, okay. I actually used it from the other side. So it has the number. Novell Pastel 055. This is the last shade I used for my rust. All of my rust gets mixed with that and some black and some gray. And then it gets applied to the to the armor vehicles as you saw in the weathering armor vehicles with pastels. The whites that I use for ashes and what have you is a white out of Novell Pastel. These sticks here I've had them since 1998, so it tells you how long they last, and I've done countless models. Uh, one of my browns that I use has been completely, okay, let me see, gold ochre, gold ochre. I'm going to have to get another stick here, tint number five out of Windsor Newton, gold ochre, tint number five, number 285, you can see right there, 285. That's one of the browns that I use for my groundwork and my uh, mud and, and stuff like that. Uh, next shade of brown that I have that I use. I use all these colors. I can mix any color, any shade I want. Um, I think it's called raw umber. Tint number four. It's been erased. See, but here's the number. 554 in Windsor Newton 554 in Windsor Newton you, it doesn't have to be exact guys you can get what you feel comfortable working with the next lighter shade of brown that's a that's a song is burnt umber tint for 076 076 burnt umber all of these I use for groundwork dirt mud the uh, shade and what have you the next tint is Burnt Umber Tint 3, 076, 076, Tint 3, 076, I believe the other one was Tint 4, 076, yes it was, okay, coming up to one of my last shades of brown, and then I'm going to show you my light shades that I use to highlight, Gold Ochre in Windsor Newton Artist Pastels. Tint number 285 AA. Tint number 4. Gold Ochre. Tint number 4. All of these that you've seen are used for groundwork, dirt, and what have you to highlight in low light. Now, to highlight vehicles and, and, uh, and adjust and all of that stuff, I start out the, the darkest shade, which is really light. Um... Hmm. Well, let me see. Earth, Earth Umber. Earth Umber, tint number two, number 554. The name has been completely... This is the last part of this stick since I used it to highlight. This is the darkest shade of light that I have. I'll use this for... Hmm. When I don't want it to be so bright, but I want it to be highlighted and look kind of dusty, I'll sand some of this and then with a broad brush, hit an armored vehicle, something that I want to look really dusty, 
and uh, you know the next one I use if you're doing North Africa or even if you want to highlight but not so prominently really bright the is raw sienna Windsor Newton tint number three five five two these are my highlighting these are my highlighting shades here and the last one that you saw me highlighting all of this and adjusting is I couldn't find Windsor Newton uh, so it's Schminke which is a German one gold ochre and it is 014 gold ochre and that's the one I use for the highest highlights like when I really want it to look really light or when I uh, if you saw if you're on any of the Facebook pages and you saw my Pacific Marine Corps Sherman tank I made the sand that's on the side splashed on with these mixtures right here I sanded them and mixed them in some brown and some gray and then um, you spray uh, hairspray and you dust it on and it sticks to it and it looks like real sand but you can make ash looking if you if you saw the diorama of the Russian diorama where the Panzer II is blowing it because the KV just hit it if you look at the Panzer II the rubber has been burned off the rims and it looks like ash well I used those tints right there to create the ash and it gives you a really re uh, real effect and that's it though that it's as simple as that stop the video write the colors down you're not gonna probably find them all exact but get something close and then you can tweak it to yourself and I hope that it helped if you have any other questions PM me comment rate I uh, welcome anything um, there's gonna be a full video on just this aircraft this guy's done and it's gonna get mounted to the base next and then we're gonna move on to our next project I hope the video helped you the Panzer Kiel happy modeling Panzer Kiel out okay that was the video and every single aircraft every single piece of armor every single figure that I do goes through that process every single one I showed you how to adjust everybody makes mistakes it gets by me too sometimes I, I slap it on heavy and what have you but the key to everything is knowing how to finish how to finish if you know how to finish you're gonna finish quick and finish good and good results but nevertheless that was the video I hope you like it I hope it helped um, again I showed you each and every single stick of uh, pastels that I use a lot of them are, have been with me 99.9% .9 of them have been with me since 1997 and I I, I still have a lot to go as you can see and uh, there's not gonna be a cheaper method than that and a more realistic method than that to get yourself um, realistic results on your models uh, rate comment if you have any questions PM me I'm more than happy to help you I want to give a shout out to all my friends on the Tamiya model ma magazine page on Facebook uh, Facebook model model uh, scale model society Facebook page um, plastic model builders group page modeling World War two page uh, we're going we're doing a group build there uh, come on down join us and join the group build it's on Battle of Britain I'm working on a Tamiya 148 scale BF 109 e4 Helmut Wick which I've been waiting years to do and then finally getting to do it because of this group build I'm also at the same time simultaneously and people think I'm nuts building a um, a TriStar 135th scale talk Panzer D uh, Panzer 4D talk however you want to call it you know it's the amphibious ones that they were gonna do for Operation Sea Lion and uh, I've got multiple builds going on and I will be posting up more videos there's going to be a video just on the airplane here on its own to show all the features to show uh, snippets of of how it came to be and what have you and um, I hope you like the video comment rate PM me stay tuned for the LA5 FM video and again uh, happy modeling Panzer Kiel out